You're being so good. Girl, I'm right here. Hey, I'm right here, honey. I'm right here. Mom's right there. Here, I'll come on the other side. Can I come on this other side here? Sure. I'm right here, sweetheart. Oh, she's right there. I'm right here. I'm right here. I see. I'm right here, baby. Good girl. I'm right here, sweetheart. I'm right here. You're so good. Such a mom's not leaving. Mom's not leaving. There you go, honey. Here she's calming down now. Well, she's she's having to run in the halter. So uh, they thought it was SVP. I do have it with me too if you need to look at it. Yeah, I have uh, it out. pretty much the whole thing. Oh, good. Let's just take a look and see what they're showing. Go ahead and do it with me. Oh, you're already done, huh? Yeah, that's good. Here. Here. There you go. See? You did good. That was quick. Good job. You're such a good girl. Good job. Probably from the old dogs jumping on her. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, there's just that little tiny spot. There. That's really big, isn't it? Wow. Oh. So she does have, uh, this is what they had suspected on that Coulter, that we couldn't really see, is she does have a very, very fast heart rate, um, mm -hmm. and I don't see an identifiable P wave on either axis here. We did a couple of different axes. And what does that mean? Well, it's probably uh, suggested that her, her atrium is quite large. And um, that's funny because that's exactly what Chris, you know, she's at ER, she's at ER, they'll people yeah. are getting her. She's okay. an ER nurse. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so that's the first thing she said is she does not see a P wave. That's the first thing she said. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm not a nurse. And that's so. what it is. There just isn't an identifiable P wave. I wanted to verify, you know, to verify that. But, um, and that would give her what they described then as an SVT or supraventricular tachycardia. It's much gotcha. different from the boxer arrhythmogenic disease. Sure. Um, and there's a couple different ways that we can proceed. They're picking her up this weekend? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would probably just give them a clip of this and uh, have them uh, get her regulated up there. Okay. And what they're going to want to do is slow her ventricular rate a little bit. I don't know that it really, um, you know, it helps us differentiate whether it's a, an anomaly or not. Okay. Yeah, you know, with the, with the uh, uh, you know, the Epstein's anomaly. I'm not sure that it really um, helps us distinguish it. But she is in, uh, it means that her um, right atrium is large enough to go into some abnormal electrical conductance. Okay. Usually, um, you know, the, uh, the pacemaker sits right up on top of the heart and it regulates and initiates all the beats. It's a little tiny electrical pacemaker that just fires, you know, periodically goes faster when you need more blood and it slows down when you rest and sleep. And this little pacemaker sends the the waves first through the right um, atrium, then the left atrium, and then it goes down into the AV node, into the ventricle, and causes the lub and the dub, the atrial and the ventricular contraction. Very coordinated electrical uh, activity. Okay. And what is happening is her right atrium is large enough where there is a, a uh, one doesn't get down to the junction like the this relay station in time before the next beat starts. Okay. And so we're getting what we call circus rhythms through the, the heart. And um, typically, um, we're going to want to get her on some medications. It really doesn't tell us whether it is Epstein's or not. It just tells us that there's 
a large enough right atrium to support this abnormal activity. But what I would um, think that they're going to do, and it's easier for them uh, to start it since she's only going to be here for another five days. Sure. Is let's just, I would probably think they're going to probably get her started on a calcium channel blocker and, and uh, a inotrope like digoxin or something okay. like that, digitalis. And what that does is it will slow the ventricular rate. But oh, good. Um, go ahead and make them a Should copy. Should I copy of this part? Yeah, just, just put this. Um, Right in yeah, just strip this across a couple of sheets of paper okay. and make them uh, staple it on one sheet of paper and make them a copy of that okay. um, that they can have it. And um, I'll back to you. <laughs> it's it's going to need medical right, management. Go. Okay. But, uh, digitalis uh, and she's going to be growing. Okay. Um, so the doses the doses of digitalis can be a little funny. Okay. And uh, it's so maybe something had to just. Yes, what, and monitor? mostly. Okay. We will do digital, digital us, um, uh, levels. I remember and we were so um, I, I would say um, it takes about two weeks to tweak a dose sometimes okay. on Dig. Okay. It takes five to seven days to build it up to effect. It's a very slow loading drug. It's not like our other drugs which just go to work immediately. Okay. But let's get her on it. They'll, they'll put her on Dig in a, in a calcium channel blocker like okay. Piazum or something like that and Lodipine. And it's going to help uh, with these abnormal beats. It's oh, that's not good. Having, oh, it is an abnormal, it's an arrhythmia, but it's not what you think of when you think of boxer, boxer. heart disease. Okay. Um, but the whole process of getting her regulated on DIG could take a couple of weeks. Okay. But I thought that's what I thought I saw on the Holter. The Holter is just such a small, compressed bit of data, though, that I, I would never make a a, a, a specific diagnosis of that type from a, sure. from a holder. She did have one VPC. In I've seen holder. that, yeah. Yeah, those are easy to spot. But when you get into looking at something that's this small on a... Uh, when I looked a, at her, what I thought, I'm like, well, this looks different than most of them that I've seen. We don't ever see super ventricular, ventricular on our no, reports. You no, you don't. She's a very unique patient. This is a very atypical the whole thing is very, very atypical. But I didn't see P waves on the Holter either. Okay. And they did note that they saw runs of SVTs, which is what you would see. Um, and in the condition is. And you got you got the whole report that I sent you to, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. I got all the okay, the good. Pages. Um, but um, from this one, I can see it. Um, sure. And you have. Uh, you have eight, the diagnosis would be atrial fibrillation. Okay. And she has a heart rate of 240. Um, oh, that's yeah, high. Which is really high. Ooh. But oh. once we get her on DIG, uh, we'll bring that heart rate down. Once we get her on a ch calcium channel blocker, this is classic treatment. So I think that's what they're going to okay. do up there. I don't think they'll do anything different in Canada. But if uh, sometimes uh, they're at a university, right? Yeah, she, well, she's the university of the, the one you were the telling Guelph. me about. Yeah. Guelph is, is only like, it's right, it's in Ontario, that's like perfect. an hour from there. Yeah. So they they may actually have um, some access to newer medications even, So, right. um, but that's the classic treatment for atrial fib and it should help get her, um, you know, um, regulated and, and, and it'll bring that rate down <laughs> and it'll help her feel better, Cricket, it'll help us feel better. And we'll, we'll just have to kind of take it one day at a time. As she gets comes. older, if they come and visit, we're going to have to bring her out so you can see her. I would yeah. love to see yeah. her at any point when they come and visit. You have been us. so wonderful and oh, so kind. Oh, it's no kind. problem. Of I mean, course. It's, it's, it's oh, my, my pleasure. Love you so oh, much. Thank you so much. <laughs> You've been thank you. so wonderful. Thank you. And, oh, yeah. I'll do anything I can to help uh, and I just her. Girl. Yeah. But because she's going so soon, yeah. Um, Let's let them just begin the process. Um, just you know, keep her you know as, as, as calm as you can until then in the in the traveling. But um, did just kind of hard. It can be a tricky drug, um, and so they're going to profit. They'll start on a dose, and then they'll check the, the blood levels typically sure. and see if we're in, they call it a trough level, and see if we're in between the lines and stuff. But I'm going to give you this. Um, oh, great! Thank yeah, you. You can have it. But this is uh, 50 millimeters per second. Lead three. And it is, uh, our rate is 240. Wow, that is crazy. Yeah, and it, uh, it looks like we're in a, a fairly classic age of Now, is that maybe what's causing her to pass out? Is, is yeah. 
Okay. Very likely. We'll get that straightened out. Maybe everything's going to straighten out. Oh, that would be fabulous. But I didn't yeah. notice it on the uh, Echo. Okay. Because I run an EKG during that whole time. She didn't oh. even see it. So okay. it might be something that she's growing into. Okay. They say um, that about 15, 10 to 15 pounds is the cutoff okay. for fibrillation. Because okay. even a small dog, the, the, uh, because they're all under the same electrical influence, a small dog just doesn't get a big enough right atrium to fibrillate. Oh, because it has okay. to reach kind of a critical size before it will will start that abnormal. Electrical. And she was 13 weeks when she was here, yeah. so and would so make sense, they get I guess. to a certain point and then it, they will fibrillate. Okay, um, and so she's at that point now, and uh, and again, I think they're going to probably put her on Dig. Um, you could pass this on um, to them today, the new owner, uh -huh. and um, have them touch base with the Guelph uh, sure. uh, Hospital uh -huh. up there. And if they do want us to start it, just have them uh, give me okay. their, their initial loading dose. And I'll oh, start that's great. It. So if okay. they want to, to work that way, that would be fine. But typically, I would uh, <laughs> would let them do it because they have to do the tweaking. But if they sure. have a dose that they want to start with in their protocol, I'll be happy oh, to I will that definitely up. do so that. So if they want us to start here, um, I'll be fine to do it. If they okay. would, they probably are going to want to just get her started up there. Sure. It, since it's such a short time. Yeah. Uh, because it is a uh, um, there's two or three different formulations of Dig, and they probably have one that they have their. Um, their experience with as far as how they're going to dose manage. Okay. Yeah, they're she's they're prepared for. I mean, they've already talked to her oh. doctor and oh, good, the good. school. Uh, her doctor, her uh, the vet that she uses actually, which probably most of us do, graduated from there. So you know, he knows the, the yeah. doctors up there and everything. Well, good, so. good. Have them um, touch base with me if they need to see any of the data. That okay. We have. And, um, you know, we just hope and pray that she just keeps on perking along. I hope um, so. You know, She's uh, so sweet. Again, this doesn't, this doesn't make that distinction for us. Yeah. It doesn't say this is one thing or the other. We're going to have one heck of a birthday party next yeah. year. She's still here. Yeah, that's the case. <laughs> But it does say that she's going to need medical management. Okay, well, that's because, good because that's one thing she asked me. Is there yeah. anything she'd go on? I says, at the time, we said there wasn't anything. Not, not at that point. Yeah. Because, um, again, we never know. Right heart failure, if they have just pure tricuspid valve dysplasia and they go into heart failure it's right side heart failure okay and so which means because that's the right side the tricuspid is the right side valve okay and so which means that they're going to uh, swell up in their belly with fluid and they'll they'll get you know distal swelling in their feet and edema and stuff like oh, that okay so what we treat with is lasix and oh diuretics. like you do with people it's the same as you do with people yeah. and there's no early advantage the treatment is purely based on clinical performance if they start to swell up you put them on drugs she doesn't sound like she's swelling at all you know she doesn't so i don't think she's in heart failure even now so i would still reserve the use of lasix and other diuretics because that is the treatment that she would be qualified for okay but with this new development then um then I think that it is something that um, that it's it's clearly um, uh, a, a need for treating that okay. particular part of the uh, component of it. But as long as we keep her out of right side heart failure, um, you know, and, and as long as she doesn't have the disease, we'll probably be okay. Oh God, yeah. we're praying for yeah, it. I know. I'm we're praying, praying, praying that she's. Uh, yeah, and they may actually have. Um, I know Madison was talking about developing parameters for Epstein's, but it's just so really? rare you just don't see it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've been doing uh, cardiac work for 20 years or more, and yeah. I, this is the second one. If she is it, I don't think she is. But if, yeah. if she were to be it, she would be the second. Wow. One. And the other one was was already. Um, I think it would pass by 20 or 24 weeks. Sure. So, I don't know. I'd be curious, so keep me informed. I, I will definitely. Yeah, anything I will that definitely. They decide. And also let me know what they're going to treat her with. Okay, so I so definitely will. So I'm aware will. of what's going on in, in case anything tip off on our end. Sure. Well, I really appreciate oh, well, everything. You're entirely welcome. Aww. Oh, she's just a sweetheart. She is. That's pretty best for you, honey, huh? You know, Bob has got some, some information for their doctor, huh? Mm -hmm. They're going to help us. And she is always like this. She's always yeah, oh, so uh, good. Yeah, she right. never cries, yeah. whines. She's, a sweetheart. She's so beautiful, too. Thank you. When yeah. the, she goes on ditch, though, um, 
they oftentimes lose their appetite. Okay. Um, if you overshoot the dose of ditch, um, they can get ditch toxicity, which is oh. a pretty tricky thing. That's a good thing then. Yeah. Did she, yeah, and she might know that being if, that she's an ER nurse too. Know. She, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna know. They'll probably give her all those warnings. Drug. It's it's a tricky drug, and and uh, once she gets up there and gets settled, um, I would say there's a couple different formulations. There's digital digoxin and digital. Okay. And so they're they manage a little differently. They they act a little bit differently. Um, but I imagine they're going to go with digox. Okay. And um, it it can be it can if you overshoot it. Usually we undershoot it and tighter it up. Okay. You know, because you can always bring it up mm -hmm. as you need to. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because everybody's a little different, but they 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 can go in. They can have you problems if if you overshoot it. Okay. Which is probably um, one of the things I would be most uh, concerned about. Okay. So they should get her going now. Right. You untied my shoe.